And we came to lift his name on high. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Oh, everybody, what a mighty, what a mighty God. We serve what a mighty God. What a mighty God. We serve. Say angels. Angels by the him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a loving God. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Now come on, say, what a loving God. What a loving God. We serve. Come on. What a loving God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a loving God we serve. What a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, we serve. We serve. We serve. What a mighty, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, we serve. We serve. We serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, we serve. We serve. We serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, we serve. We serve. We serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's praise our God as we go before the throne of grace. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving and praise. We glorify your holy name for you are God Almighty, excellent in all of your ways. We glorify you and magnify you on this day. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for waking us up this morning. Thanking you for allowing us to see another day of your grace and mercy. Thank you for all in our footsteps this day, leading us into the house of worship where we can meet together and glorify your name, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for them that are on the airways, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for the tuning in to the broadcast. God, that they may learn of you, Lord God. We thank you for the souls of men, women, boys, and girls all around the world, Lord, as they hear the message of faith, as they hear the message of love, Lord that they will surrender their hearts to you, Lord God. We pray for their salvation. We pray for their healing. We pray for their deliverance. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you right now for your loving kindness towards us. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for having your way in our hearts. Thank you for transforming us, Lord, into the image of the Most High God. We glorify you today. Have thine own way. Use your man serving for your glory. Oh God, have your way in his heart, Lord. Oh God, allow your word, Lord God, to go forth like a two-edged sword, God. Cutting the enemy asunder, for we rebuke the powers of Satan, the powers of darkness that has come against this land, Lord, that has come against your people. Oh God, we thank you right now for your amazing grace. Have thine own way today. Move by your power today. We welcome you to the little side. We welcome your anointing today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, everybody. Oh, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. We come on, everybody say, What a mighty God. We serve, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Angels, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. 
heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Water, you turn it to wine. Come on, everybody. Open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you, none like you. Into the darkness, into the darkness we shine. But out of the ashes, out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, none like you. Come on, our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Our God. Come on, our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Come on, our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God. Listen, and if thou God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if thou God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if thou God is with us, then what can stand again? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? Come on. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? What can stand again? Then what can stand again? What can stand again? Come on, what? Then what can stand again? Come on, then what? Then what can stand again? Come on, everybody, one more time. Then what can stand again? Glory, There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no come on everybody. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no come on everybody. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all we see how great, how great is our God. Woo, woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody say, how great is our God, sing with me, how great. How great, how 
That's who you are. Come on, put those hands together. And let somebody know that's who he is. He is a great God. Come on, just witness to somebody right now and tell them he is a great God. I'm so glad to know him for myself because he is a great God. Amen. He is a great God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Somebody hand me my other eyes over there. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. He is a great God. I'm standing before you to celebrate the presence of God. 
And we all know that God is well able to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Come on, tell somebody his riches and glory. Amen. Your supply does not depend only on you. He gives you the strength to go to work. He gives you the strength to be able to do the things that you do to accumulate and to acquire the funds that you need. Amen. But I want to read a scripture today, amen, in reference to someone in need. Have you ever been in that place? Have you ever been in that place where your funds were lower than you, what your demand for repayment was? Amen. Have you ever been in that place where you needed a miracle from God? And when you received it, you knew it was. Oh, I wish I could. Can I get somebody just to acknowledge the praise of God? Amen. You know it was nobody but God. Somebody came up with the thought, if the Lord had not been my help, where would I be? And so we are going to, amen, view a story of a struggle. Amen. As we turn our Bibles, amen, to Genesis chapter 21. Amen. In Genesis chapter 21, amen, in verse 15, there's a story about Hagar. Hagar was expelled from, amen, uh, Abraham and Sarai. And when she was released from them, I believe that she still had an attitude. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, learn to check your attitude. Because your attitude determines your aptitude. And guess what? If your altitude is not high enough, you can't receive the spiritual blessings that God says that are in spiritual places, in high places in Christ. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so we find here that when she was released from them, she may have still had an off spirit of the whole ordeal. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're upset, you limit what God can do in your life. Look at your neighbor one more time and tell him, check your attitude. Amen. In Genesis, amen, verse 20, chapter 21, verse 15. And the Bible says, and the water was spent in the bo bottle. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. No ability to be refreshed. Amen. The Bible shows us that, amen, the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child uh, under one of the shrubs. In other words, she was getting him out of the heat of the problem. Amen. She was trying to shelter the son. Amen. But look at verse 16. Verse 16 goes on to say, and she went and sat down, her down under against him a good ways off. She was looking at the desperation of her son while she was yet in desperation herself, amen, and began to just stare with hopelessness. Come on, somebody say hopelessness. Amen. The Bible goes on to say, amen, as it were a bone, a bow shot, amen, and said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and began to wet. Amen. Listen to me. You can't weep. You got to learn how to pray. Come on, tell your neighbor, stop weeping and learn how to pray. Amen. But there's something that happened that caught my attention. When I look at these two verses, verses 15 and 16, I go on and I see in verse 19. Somebody turn to 19. I see also in that same chapter and series of verses, in verse 19, the Bible says, and God opened her eyes. And God opened her eyes. Who opened her eyes? God opened her eyes. And the Bible says, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottles with water. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, a time of refreshing. God had sent a time of refreshing. The Bible says, and filled the bottles with water and gave the lad drink. Now, my question is, what happened between verses 15 and 16? And when we get to 19, it talks about, hey, amen, she had more than enough. Well, I'm glad you asked me what happened, Pastor. Come on, ask me what happened, Pastor. I'm glad you asked. In verse 17 of that same chapter, it says, amen, and God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, what aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God, somebody say, for God. 
For God heard the voice of the lad where when he did what? When he prayed. Amen? But look at this. It says in verse 18, arise. Somebody say arise. arise. Lift up the child. Somebody say lift up the child. Lift up the child. Amen? I know it says lad. And it says, and hold him in thine arms. For I will make him, come on somebody, make him a great nation. Now, what happened between the verse? I'm glad you asked. Obedience is a place of refreshing. She moved out of disappointment and moved in faith. Somebody say faith. Now look at somebody and say, everything we do has to be done by faith. Because if it's not done by faith, it can't be honored. You can give your tithes and not give it in faith, and guess what? You won't get a return. But when you learn how to give in what? Obedience. It was the obedience that brought, amen, something that was already there. Listen to what I said. The well was already there. The supply was already there. What she needed was already there. So she was suffering, amen, when she didn't have to suffer. She just had to come into a place of what? Obedience. I'm glad y'all listening because I'm going to give you a test. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We see here because she moved in obedience, resources were at her disposal. And that's what I want to say, amen, when your resources are depleted, all you have to do is get in obedience and God will provide. Can I get an amen in the building? Amen. God will provide. As I continue to talk, as I close, amen, the praise team can come because what? God will supply. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Amen. God will supply. Don't you ever get confused about God's supply because according to his riches in glory. Come on, somebody say, according to his riches in glory. Amen. It's not based on yours. It's not based on the economy. It's not based on how you feel. It's based on God's kingdom. And God has more than enough. He owns a cattle on a thousand hill. He'll make ways out of no way. He'll cause water to come out of a rock. He'll make, he, oh, come on, tell your neighbor, won't he do? Do it. do it. Give God a praise if you love him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give Him the honor. Give Him the Worship the Lord in the beauty of 
holiness. Come on, lift your voice and say, Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come on, give him the honor. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Oh, 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 come. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Give my God. Give my God the glory. Give my God the praise. Worship Him. Worship Him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give Him the praise. Come on, worship Him. Worship him. Give my God the glory. Give my God the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the Pray. Come on, just the tenors, baby. Worship him. Worship him. Give my God the glory. Give my God the praise. Worship him. Worship him. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Come on, alto. Worship him. Worship him. Give my God the glory. Give my God the praise. Worship Him. Worship Him. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give Him the Come, let us worship the Lord. 
to the Lord. Hallelujah! Worship Him. Worship Him. Come let us worship the Lord. Come let us worship the Lord. Let's give Him the Worship the Lord. Come, let us 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 worship Him. Come, let us worship the Lord. I came to worship. Come, let us worship the Lord. One more time, say. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give Him the praise. Put those hands together. Give God the love of your heart. Amen. Come let us worship the Lord. Amen. Tell somebody it's always good to worship the Lord. Always good to worship the Lord. I just want to put a little pin in your relaxation. Amen. Many of us have gotten so accustomed now to staying home. But amen. The Lord is charging me to share with some of you all. Don't get too comfortable that you get so used to just staying home when you can come to church and practice social distancing. Amen. It's not a requirement to come. You come because you want to, not because you have to. But you ought to come if it's a provision for you to be able to come. Amen. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because many of you all go to work. Amen. And the reason you go to work is because you are going to receive something. Well, but it's the same with the house of God. I just want to challenge you to understand that as if your church is practicing social distancing, then you ought to participate in the presence of the house of God. Amen. I'm not saying it's a mandate and you have to. But I'm just saying that, amen, it's a good thing to come to the house of God. And if you have your mask on and you practicing with the stations that they have set up to wash your hands or however they do, then you need to consider from time to time. Don't get so used to just staying home. But from time to time, you ought to put your feet inside the door. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves as some will in the last days. It's amazing that God may have seen pandemic back when he even wrote that. Amen? Because we can't figure him out. And so I say again, amen, if you can trust the job, I believe some of you can trust the church. Uh, some of you trust the supermarket. I believe some of you can trust the church. I believe if you can trust your neighbors and your relatives and go to their home, I believe you can trust the church. Is that all right? Amen. And don't be looking to sue the church. Amen. If you get a cold. Nowadays you can sneeze and clear your whole neighborhood. Because everybody's afraid. But we ought not to operate in fear. But to operate in confidence. To know that God is able. Come on tell your neighbor God is able. You can sit on. 
Amen. God is able. Amen. I want to talk to your hearts on this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, holler at me. Come on, find somebody else and tell them to holler at me. Amen. We need to learn how to holler at each other. I grew up in the projects, amen, in the city of Newark, New Jersey, and we had 12 uh, floors of a building to live in with a whole lot of apartments. And a lot of times the elevator didn't work. <laughs> and so as a direct result of these elevators not working, we oftentimes would stand on the ground and holler to people up on the 12th floor. Hey, Joe! We would holler. Why? Because we were trying to get the attention of the person in whom we were trying to have fellowship with. And so, amen, as I began to think on this message right now, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got to holler at you. Amen, because when I holler at you, I can get your attention. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when I holler at you, come on, tell them, when I holler at you, it's a voice of love. Amen, give God a good hand clap as we get ready to go. Amen to the text of the scriptures. Amen. Open up your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 58 and 1. And the Bible says, cry loud. Come on, cry loud. Now, I, I, want, to I want you to understand something. I need you to understand the heart of God. Many a times when this scripture used to be read in old times, amen, it was as if People were being beaten and torn to pieces because of a life not lining up with God. But, amen, line upon line, precept upon precept, and the closer of Jesus' return, the greater light of understanding comes to us. When I read this scripture, when he says, cry loud, I'm hearing that God is crying to his people. He is trying to get their attention because he loves us so much. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, God loves you. The Bible says even while we were yet sinners, God commanded, God, amen, had the resources of heaven to, amen, try to rescue us because we were going in the wrong direction. I wish I could get an amen or buy one. But anyway, we need to understand that the cry of God means that the heart of God is being broken. And so when Isaiah, amen, begins to cry out, God says to him, cry loud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet in Zion. Amen. Listen to what the scripture says. The Bible says, amen, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression. And the house of Jacob. It's very, very important that you underline, amen, that verse that says Jacob. Underline it, highlight it, because it brings such great substance to the heart of God. The Bible says, amen, it says that, amen, the house of Jacob. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? God changed Jacob's name. How many of y'all remember that? That God changed Jacob's name. He changed Jacob's name because Jacob, amen, was being hindered by what his past failures was. You ought to just tell somebody right now, I don't care what you've done or how you did it. Your past can't last. Come on, to, come on, give him a praise. Right, I feel a praise right there. I feel a praise that God don't hold my past because it will hinder my future. And because he loves us, he cries out to us. Amen. Listen to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want to holler at you. Why, want, why do I want to holler at you? It's because I love you and I don't want you to ever miss God. So it is my responsibility as a child of God. It's my responsibility as a love of God. And it's my responsibility because we are, amen, in fellowship that I holler at you if I see you going in the wrong direction. The Bible says, Amen. As I talked about how Jacob's name was changed. It was changed because, amen, he wrestled with the angel through the night. 
And because he refused to give up, oh, you ought to tell somebody you can't give up. I know sometimes life will present itself, but you can't give up. And because he wrestled, because he was determined, he, God turns him around and changes his name from deceiver to prince. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, won't he do it? He'll change your nature. He'll change your mind. He'll change your behavior. He'll change your reaction. He'll change your response because he's that kind of God. So, amen, God sends the prophet Elijah, amen, to the people who are supposed to be prince and princesses. And because this next generation did not follow, amen, what Jacob, amen, who his name had been turned to Israel, had dwindled off from following God all the way. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 99 and a half it still won't do. Come on, tell them, 99 and a half. It still won't do. <laughs> Let's look at this next verse. In verse 2, the Bible says, Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. That word righteousness means righteous acts. Amen. Not that you're righteous in your own, but you do righteous acts. You go do good things. Amen. The Bible says, For and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask me the ordinance of justice. And they take delight in approaching me. God says, I had to send the prophet. Because you give me a great outward show. But inwardly, you're not serving me at the point of my desire. It's amazing that there's such great actors in the house of God. Amen. Notice that he said, cry loud. Show my people. In other words, God wasn't dealing with sinners. He was talking to his own. And I think a lot of times people miss the fact of who God was talking to. He was talking to his beloved. He was talking to the apple of his eye. He was talking to those whom he made sacrifice for. He was talking to those he brought out of Egypt. He was talking to those that he healed. He was talking to them that fed him a man manna. He was talking to them that drunk water out of a rock. He was talking. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. He was talking. This same God that was talking to them is the same God that will talk to us. If only... We would listen. And so the scriptures goes on to say, amen, how that, amen, they forsook the ordinances and had such great delight in having an outward show. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want to remind you of an old song. Beauty's only skin deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, this thing got to be in your heart. It can't be on the surface. It can't be, amen, a great actor. Amen, the devil is giving out, amen, what they call Emmy Awards. What do you mean the enemy's giving out enemy wars? He said, I'm so glad you in the church pretending like you're saved, but keep it on up because here's your trophy. I, oh, I, I wish I could talk to somebody. Amen, God is tired of actors. He wants some real folk. He wants some folk that will stand up for what's right and deny what is wrong. He wants folk that will stand up and show forth his glory in the midst of a wicked world. I want to tell somebody, it's time to be real for the things of God. It's time to be real in your praise. It's time to be real in your dance. It's time to be real in your shout. Oh, I wish I could get a praise in the building. They had a form of godliness. And because God loved them, he sent a word to the house of Jacob. God sent a word to the house of our churches today. I'm hoping that I'm talking to somebody out there 
who will do what the Bible says in Corinthians. Let a man examine himself. Let me tell you something. God never uses guilt to try to get you to love him. This word is not to, amen, produce guilt. This word is to produce that God loves you and you'll start loving him back. Come on, somebody. Oh, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you love him? He said, Peter, do you love me? Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. Listen to what the book of Revelation tells us. The book of Revelation says, as many as I love. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Somebody ought to holler out, uh-oh. Uh-oh, come on, say it again, uh-oh. How many of y'all remember when you did wrong and mama got them straps or went out there and broke off a branch? It wasn't that she was trying to hurt you. She was just trying to help you. If your mama used to beat you, your daddy used to beat you, God will beat you, but he won't hurt you. He'll just get your attention somehow. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't like beatings. Come on, tell him I don't like beatings. I'll never forget. <laughs> I'm taking a little side trip here of memory lane. <laughs> I remember my mom used to beat me quite often because I was always acting up, I guess. I can't remember. But my God, my mother used to have these little skinny belts. Amen. And when she went to go swinging, boy, it'd tear your hind parts all to pieces. And so in the process of time, my, I, I had gathered so many belts that I put them behind the refrigerator, not knowing that eventually she's going to be looking for a belt when all the belts are behind the refrigerator. And so my mom began to look all around and finally found those belts. She put all them belts together and wore me out. I never touched another one of her belts. I wish I could get a praise. <laughs> amen. Why? Why? Why the chastisement? Why, amen, the straps? Why, amen, the beatings? Amen, I know this new society, amen, the government's trying to tell you if you beat them, you're going to go to jail. What kind of foolishness is that? Amen, you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. And we're seeing a whole lot of results of the spoiled situation in the lives of so many. But that's not my message today. But good, look at what it says, Revelation 3.19. And it says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and do what? And do what? Repent. Change your course. Change your direction. Change your behavior. Why? Because I love you. Good God. Can you give God a good praise right there? Because I love you. No, no chastening for the time. Amen. It's joyous but grievous. But look at what God's ultimate goal is. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I want you to understand God's ultimate purpose. What is his ultimate purpose? His ultimate purpose is to do what? Is to make you yield peaceable fruits of righteousness unto them which exercise thereby. God is trying to get us to be like him in the earth. Woo, you ought to just sit up a good free praise right there. I want to be like Jesus. I don't want to be like Mike. Not you, Mike. Amen. But the basketball Jordan Mike. They say, amen, I want to be like Mike. No, I want to be like Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. God's love misunderstood. You know what? It's amazing how God's love is so often misunderstood. Amen. Because why? Because when people, amen, who are determined to serve God, they're determined to serve him on their own uh, source of resources. In other words, God, I'll serve you, but this is the way the contract has to go. Y'all going to look at me after a while. In other words, they want to serve God on their own terms. This is why there's so many idols in our society and around the world, because they want gods that they have created with their own hands so that can't hear, can't see, can't speak, so they can do what they want, and the idol just sits there with approval. <laughs> are y'all hearing the Holy Ghost yet? And so we see here that the people were doing, amen, a lot of outward things, but God's desire was not being met. Why? Because they loved themselves more than they loved God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad you can hear me holler at you. Go on and holler at somebody right now. Hey! <laughs> I'm hollering at you. I, I don't want you to be destroyed. I'm going to holler at you. 
Uh, look at what it says. The voice, the voice of love that is so misunderstood and often rejected. Somebody say misunderstood and often rejected. Look at what Galatians says. Galatians 4 and 16. He said, am I therefore become your enemy? You know what? Can I stop here for a second? It is amazing, and I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to surprise some of y'all, but it is amazing that the Bible is right. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm going to shock some of you all to see that when the Bible speaks of things and things happen, it shocks some of you all, but yet God has already said it. When you love people enough to tell them the truth, they will get mad with you if they are not walking in God's truth. I wish I had, could get a praise in the building. And so, your voice becomes loud, but it becomes rejected. Mm, mm, mm. Kenny Anderson, you preaching this word today. Look at this. Look at what he says. He said, I am therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. How many of you all have developed enemies because you have told people the truth. No matter how much sugar you put on it, no matter how much honey you put on it, no matter how much love you show in it, they will walk away upset with you. And don't dare be a friend to somebody they don't like. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me get off of that. So here we have Paul, amen, affection towards the Galatians. And being discarded by the Galatians because of false teachers. Oh, come on, look at what look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, just like yesterday, we still got them today. Come on, look at somebody you ain't talked to. Pin it on Facebook, type it all up. False teachers will become people friend who walk in false pretense. Are y'all hearing the Holy Ghost? These false teachers were more concerned about being politically correct. Than be in government by following governmental guidelines that they could care less about your personal need. Uh, did you, anybody catch that? They won't tell you you're wrong because if they tell you you're wrong, then you, you become their enemy and then you'll leave and take your pocketbook. Did you hear what I just said? And so the interest is so hard now on being politically correct and the pulpit has become friendly uh, but but God's not friendly God is righteous God is truth God is power God has an anointing God will stand with you God will make a way God will defeat your enemy God will fight your battle that's the kind of God that I want in my life oh uh, can I get an amen in here somewhere and so we see here that Paul was not interested in being politically correct because he was once in the political party. But when the Holy Ghost, when heaven began to open, when God began to show up, when the power began to be revealed, he was knocked off his beast of self-worth and my God hit the ground and became blind and all he could see was the glory of God. <laughs> Woo! Good God of mine. There was a man. Hit that note, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Paul was, had such a strong affection uh -huh, for the Galatians. God's love through Paul. Notice what I just said? God's love through Paul. Can I bring it into our church? God's love through Apostle Anderson. Amen. Guess what? It's often being rejected. What do you mean, preacher? The paradox. Come on now. now. The paradox here is that the apostle became their enemy by telling the truth that the Judaizers, which were their enemies, turned around and became their friends. I'm reminded of what Jesus said. If the world hate me. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, get your heart together now. I know they done walked on it. I know they done crushed you from time to time. They done talked behind your back, smiling in your face all the time. They want to take your place, and they got a label. It's called backstabbers. 
amen, folk will backstab you when you are trying to save and rescue them from the clutches of hell. But because there are so many false teachings out here, amen, you don't have to live all that. You don't have to do all that. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to give money to the church. Just be kind and be good, and you'll be all right. Keep doing what you're doing. God understands. I wish I could get somebody to back me up. As long as you make friends, as long as everybody loves you, as long as they tell you you all right you're all right but guess what God said not so they made the enemy their friend but just Paul just like Isaiah was giving the people the mind and heart of God look at your neighbor and say neighbor I hear the preacher preaching but I'm hearing the heart of God. Tell somebody else, I hear the preacher preaching, but I'm hearing the mind of God. Come on, look at somebody else. Say, I hear the preacher preaching, but I see God is trying to love me, amen, in a closer walk. I know I hear the preacher, but I know God wants more of my attention. I hear the preacher preaching, but I hear God saying I love you. I wish I could get some help in here that God loves me more, even more than I love myself. You'll put tobacco in your body while God will turn around and try to purge it out. Paul, like Elijah, was giving the people the mind and the heart of God. Jesus turns around and starts hollering at his people. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when the last time somebody hollered at you? <laughs> you know, some people will give you that angry look. You better not say nothing. You better not act like you don't like what I'm doing. Because if you do, I'll stop being your friend. He said, because I tell you the truth, has I become your enemy? Or oh, you ought to look at somebody and say, my God, that's why. Come on, I'm not going to even say what the that why is. But now you get a better understanding, that's why. Jesus is here in this scripture. In Matthew 23. And 37. Jesus is hollering at his people. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is not about volume. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Look, look at what Matthew says. Matthew says, oh God of deliverance. Oh God of deliverance. Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophet. That thou killest the enthusiasm of the preacher. Thou that killest the preacher's expectation. Thou that killest the inspiration of the delivery of a message because of the looks that they receive. But I'm reminded of what God told Jeremiah. He said, I will make your forehead hard against their forehead. You got to cry loud. Because there's somebody, mm, there's somebody that need a word from God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got to cry loud. Because there's somebody that need a word from God. Listen to what he says. He says, amen. He said, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which are sent. Which are what? which are sent. You've been praying for help and God sends it. You've been asking for answers and God sends it. And you reject it because it's not the way you want it. High, high five somebody in the spirit and just tell them, I know that's right. <laughs> People will reject the very thing. Can I just take a little side step here? Uh-huh. Buckwheat with two strands of hair come into your life because you've been praying for a husband. And now they show up. And that is the man that God wants you to have. But you said, oh, Lord, God must have missed this one. 
And so you go get the one that's 6'2", 200, watch yourself, girl. Two, <laughs> she done threw my thought off. Look at 200 pounds, amen. Look like he's been lifting weights since he was three months old. Walking in, amen, smiling, had a beautiful set of teeth, had, amen, a Mercedes, amen, the latest thing rocking. And now, man, you say, okay, God, this is the one. And God keeps showing you buckwheat, but you ain't paying no attention to buckwheat. But see, my God, you go on and you get that one that you wanted to select. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if God ever want to punish you, he'll give you what you want. Come on, somebody. And they hear your old buckwheat over there with tears in his eyes. And then you go on and you tie the nut with that robust guy but amen no sooner than you said I do you turn around and find out you did it and here go Buckwheat Buckwheat done went and got some implants Buckwheat done went and got his eyes straight Buckwheat went and got a good job Buckwheat now flying high and now Buckwheat walking down the street with a centerfold <laughs> oh Jerusalem Oh, Jerusalem, God was trying to point you in the right direction. But because you got your own description, because you got your own set of rules, because you got your own idea, God says, I'm sending you an answer because I love you. Somebody out here in the Holy Ghost say, love me another way, Lord. <laughs> My wife over there talking about, don't send buckwheat. Come on, get your mind right. Get your mind right. <laughs> so we see here, he's crying out. Jesus is talking to his people and he's hollering at them. And he said, thou that stonest them, which I have sent unto thee. Come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor, this is the love cry of God. It's a love cry. He said, listen here. He said, how often, come on, look at this. Look at this love cry of God. He said, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicks under her wing. And as much as I keep trying to do it, you keep rejecting me. You keep not warning me. You keep throwing me aside. You keep ignoring me. But guess what? Because I love you, I keep trying to get you. I keep trying to love you. I keep trying to reach to you. I keep trying to tell you I'm there. I I keep trying in the midst of your trouble. I keep trying to make resources. How did you make it this far? It's because when you were going through the most toughest time of your life, I was right there when you saw one set of footprints. It is because I, I love you. Tell your neighbor, holler at me. Men love their darkness. Amen. Rather, than light. The Bible tells us in John 3.19 and this is the condemnation that light come on somebody say light God has shown you. You know what I've noticed over the years when people get in trouble they acknowledge God they sell out to God Lord if you give me another chance I'm reminded of a young man who comes to our church after he gets hurt, he always show up when he gets tore all to pieces. The last time he came, he was in an accident and both legs were messed up. But I had seen this, this perpetual, amen, appearance when trouble and pain hit his life. And when he came through the line in a wheelchair, amen, both legs wrapped up because they were broken. And he said, Pastor, I want you to know I'm here now. And I looked at him and I said, we shall see. And guess what? Soon as he got here, I have not seen him since. I don't know how many years it's been. Why? Because you, when people are in need, that's when they want to cry out to God. But God says, I don't want to be Santa Claus. I want to be a father. I want to be the love of your heart. I want you to be the apple of my eye. 
That's why I'll send people to holler at you. Rather than you get mad, you ought to embrace what they share because they're trying to prevent you from being in trouble when it's all said and done at the conclusion of it all. When you're laying on the cooling board, when you finally get the church stretched out, and my God, now you're getting ready to see me for real, but you're not ready, and I can't keep you here. But if you just go on and receive the word that is being hollered at you, look at your neighbor and say, holler at me. Listen, as the scripture says, the light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But check this out. The Holy Ghost revealed this to me. And he told me, he said, the deeper the darkness, the louder the gospel is heard. You would think it would be the other way. But God says, no. The deeper into darkness that people go in, and that is why there's such a strong resistance against the presence in our culture today. Why? Because the darker you become, the louder the gospel offends. See, there used to be a time you could preach the gospel, and it didn't matter because man wasn't in the debauchery that they are in today. Because man is getting so lost into the darkness, the gospel is becoming louder and louder. And because they rather love their darkness, the word becomes an offense. The louder it becomes, we become, amen, lawbreakers now. Why? Because we used to preach the gospel and put people would repent and turn to God. But now people want to sue the church. They want to sue the word of God. They want to take the word of God out. They want to get God out their memory, out their minds. Because as long as the word is heard, conviction comes into their life. I wish I could help somebody come out of the darkness because I'm hollering at you today. The Lord loves you. Can I get a sound on that organ just once today? Tell your neighbor God love you. And don't you ever get it twisted. When you hear a word that comes out and sometimes offend you, it's a sign that the devil got an area in your life. You need to repent and say, God, I hear you talking to me. Your voice is coming through loud and clear. Whew. Somebody give him a praise right there. And so you tell your neighbor, look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't see no shadow of the sun, S-O-N, around me, holler at me. <laughs> a shadow can only be cast when a sun is shining. If you look up here on this thing, I see a shadow over there. Don't mean I'm perfect, but it means that I'm standing in his presence for him to continue to keep purifying me. Keep helping me along the way. When somebody holler at me, I'm not quick to get offended. Why? Because my heart is in line with what God's will is for my life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you won't get offended when your heart is right towards the will of God. Let me move on as I'm just about halfway. The Bible says, when you look at life, it is always trying to make you have ears that are dull of hearing. Did you hear what I just said? The enemy wants your ears to become dull. He doesn't want, come on, look at somebody or type it on Facebook and tell them, the enemy don't want you to hear truth. He wants you to hear emotions. He wants you to hear, amen, excitement. He doesn't want you to hear truth. Come on, somebody. Listen to this. Matthew 13, verse 15, and I'm reading it from the Amplified Bible. And it says, for this nation, heart has grown gross, fat, and dull. Because we've been privileged. Let me tell you something. Don't get fooled. You are blessed more than you ever can imagine. You can talk about America all you want to. But guess what? I wouldn't want to be no place else. I wish I could get a witness in this building. Huh? Come on, somebody. People from the foreign country get over here and act up and go to jail. Guess what? They just as happy as a monkey in a barrel of peanuts. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't ever think that you're not blessed. Don't you ever think that God is mistreating you. Well, let me finish reading. It says, for this nation's heart has grown gross, and it says fat and dull, and their ears heavy and different, difficult of hearing, and their eyes, they, their eyes, what? They have tightly closed. I don't want to go to that church because if I go, he's going to say something I don't like. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's an indicator. Something ain't right. Because when a preacher preach, you ought to receive it. Because God's trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something right now, right now, right now, right now. Come on, say amen, somebody. So we see here, amen, as we read this, amen, it goes on to say, amen, at least something's going to happen. It says, amen, it says, lest they see and proceed. Listen to what it said now. They close their eyes shut. Because it, lest they see and perceive with their eyes and hear and comprehend the sense with their ears and grasp the understanding with their heart and turn and what? And turn and what? I shall what? Heal. See, God ain't trying to cry loud and show you sin. God's crying loud to show his love. Oh, I wish. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. This is called the good news. If you're being condemned, which is of the devil, that ain't a message came from God. But if you are convicted, that is a message that's come from God to tell you, I love you. Come over this way. Come this way. Come this way. Come on, tell your neighbor, come this way. Amen. And I've got some people that love you. And that's why they are holler at you. It might get your flesh all stirred up, but guess what? It's going to produce holiness and righteousness if you yield to the presence of a living God. Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm in love with him who saved me, who delivered me, who raised me, who healed me, who delivered me and set me free. What can I... What can I render unto the Lord for all his benefits showed towards me? Look at your name and say, neighbor, holler at me and keep on hollering at me. Some of y'all ain't talking to nobody. I said, holler at me. Uh, come on, tell somebody, holler at me. If you love me, you'll holler at me. Come on, say it. If you love me, you'll holler at me. Now look at your neighbor and just holler at Hey! <laughs> Give God a good hand clap. The world, the world is telling us not to preach the truth of the gospel anymore. Silencing the gospel is the enemy's attempt to advance his kingdom. Are y'all hearing the Holy Ghost yet? He is trying to advance his kingdom. Remember what I said? The more in darkness that they go, the louder the gospel is being heard. Look at what it says here, amen, in Acts chapter 5. And the Bible says, and to him, talking about Gamaliel, who was the high priest at that time, amen, they agreed with what he said about touching these men. And when they had called the apostles, what did he say? And did what? Beat them. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whenever you holler at somebody who don't want to hear, you might get a little trouble behind it. Oh, come on. Somebody ought to get a witness. I got a witness. Come on. I got a witness. Uh-huh. They, they beat them. But I hope that your response to the beating is as good as the beating as you see here. Listen to what it says. And they commanded them that they should not what? Speak. Or preach in the name of Jesus. Some high profile preacher was asked a question. Are you trying to tell us that Jesus is the only way to get to God? And you know what this powerful mega ministry preacher said? I'm not saying that. 
Now, how can you not say that when Jesus' word clearly states that no man cometh unto the Father but by me? Now, I'm not no biblical expert by no means, but I do have good common sense when I read some of these scriptures. And when he said, I am the only way, and you ask me, is that the only way? I've got to say yes, because I'm reading it right here. See what I'm talking about? False teachers whose whole agenda is leave my territory alone. But see, when a preacher loves you, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm so glad to have a preacher that loves me. Because he's sure going to tell me the truth. Now give God a good praise if you got one left. And the Bible says, and let them go. They beat them, and then they let them go. But look at the response of the beaten. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is teaching you what to do when you get rejected by those who don't want no parts of you. Listen to what verse 41 says. He said, and they departed from the presence of the council doing what? Having church. Look at your neighbor and say, couldn't wait to get to church because I've been beaten while I've been gone because I've been sharing this news to some folk and they began to make me feel like I was the devil. And my God, they blasphemed my name, dragged my name through the mud, tell me how, how wrong I've been and how unrighteous I am. But when I get to the house of God, I've got the opportunity to let that beating get turned into a boost of praise. Somebody ought to praise him right there. Lord, I thank you. Being counted worthy for the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I wish I could get a praise up in here. You ought to tell somebody that's why I shout. That's why I lift my hands. That's why you might see tears roll down my face. But through it all, look at your name and say, but through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. He is a friend that'll never leave you nor forsake you. Give me five more minutes. <laughs> they rejoiced because they felt like they were worthy of the beating. <laughs> the degree of my beatings is my scale to know just how effective I'm being. Ooh. Ooh. I'm getting ready to close. Look at this scripture. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, the reason for my hollering is that the call on my life has required it. It has required it. If I see you going in a direction of hell, it is my spiritual responsibility to holler at you. Ezekiel 33 and 5. And the Bible says, he heard the sound of the trumpet. Somebody say hollering. And took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. If we fail to holler at most of those that are in need, it not only costs them, but it costs us if we don't say a word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you got saved doesn't mean that all you do is tiptoe through the tulips. You have a spiritual responsibility to enlighten folk whenever you're in the presence of folk who are going in the wrong direction. I don't know about you, but you ought to love somebody beside yourself. I wish I could have some help in here. And so God is saying, amen, if you don't want them, if you don't share with them, if you don't holler at them, then you are going to be responsible for them going to hell. Ah, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I love me too much to not share. Whether they reject it or not, it doesn't matter. Amen. At the end of every message, it is our spiritual responsibility to say what? Do you want to be saved? I don't take it for granted that everybody watching this broadcast, people in the pew, I don't know who's saved and who's not. But guess what? Every opportunity, there ought to be a time when you come and say, do you want to be saved? Huh, good God Almighty. That's some good preaching. Hey, let me finish here. Look at what it says. In Galatians 2.11, and I'm reading it from the Message Bible. The Bible says, Paul began to holler at Peter 
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. The word says, iron sharpeneth iron. But don't you know most Christians don't want you sharpening them? Because they know just as much as you, if not more. Listen to what he says here. He said, later when Peter came to Antioch, I had a face-to-face -face confrontation with him because he was clearly out of line. He was clearly out of line. What did, what, what did he do? What did he do? Well, see, we got to always understand, we all want to be accepted. How many want to be accepted? All of us want to be loved. Come on, somebody. Don't, don't, don't leave me out here. Amen. But it comes with a cause. Amen. We all want to be successful, but what's the cause? Amen. We, 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 we can't deny the will and purpose of God because it comes with a what? A cause. Amen. Peter was moving in the direction of darkness, but thanks be unto God that Paul loved Peter enough to holler at him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you love me enough to holler at me? Come on, come on. Do you love me? Well, I know you will, but, but do, do you love me enough? <laughs> do, you, do you love me enough to holler at me? Because, see, when you holler at me, I'm not going to get offended. I'm going to take what you shared with me and ponder it in the presence of God. Oh, I wish I could talk to somebody. I'm going to ponder it in the presence. I may, I may for that moment, amen, can't understand what your purpose is, but, 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 but I've got to get into the presence of God and do what the Corinthians tell me. I've got to examine myself so that I can get the benefit of you hollering at me. Look at your neighbor and say, holler at me. <laughs> Peter was confronted by Paul. Love is hollering at us today. Not only do you, love is hollering at me. Sometimes I can get angry. I can get upset. I know how to shut down. I know how not to participate. How many of y'all do the same thing? Don't be looking at me like you got it all together. But look at what it says here. Going back to Isaiah, Isaiah said something. He said, amen, look at what it says in Isaiah 58. And I'm reading it from another translation. He said, listen here, shout! A full-throated shout. What? A full throttle or throat. I want to say throttle. Shout. Come on, let me hear you holler at me. Hey! hey! Can't hear you. That ain't full. See, because when it's... Help me out, Robin. When you're... No, 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 not the keys. When, 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 you, when you have the folks singing... You don't tell them to holler from their throat, do you? Come on, say it in that microphone. Huh? No, right? Okay, but so but when you want a real note, you tell them you got to come from the diaphragm. Right. Okay, see, I don't sing, but, but, but I've been watching them. Okay, but, li but listen to this. When I tell you to holler at me, you can't be just hollering at me from your throat. Give me a holler that you're really trying to get my attention. That might, that's a little bit better. Let me, y'all yeah, too slow. Let me move on. Listen, a full-throated shout, holding what? Nothing back. Doing what? You got a friend that's got a wife, and he uses you to be his excuse to go out with his girlfriend. You better holler, else both of you going to be in trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your friend comes to you and says, man, I'm just going through. Come on, let's go get a drink. It better be grape juice. Because if you're participating and you're not hollering, and yet you're a deacon, something's wrong. I wish I could talk to somebody. Listen to what he says. He said, holding nothing back, a trumpet blast sound. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives. Face my family, Jacob. Their sins. Why is God speaking to his people? Because people won't know the truth. Listen to this now. This is very powerful, and I'm closing. People won't know the truth of the gospel if it's not exhibited by the kingdom in your life. 
if we're doing the same thing that sinners do, then guess what? People won't get saved. But as I close with this last scripture, and some of y'all out there might be saying, I can't wait till he finish. But listen to what Matthew 5 and 16 says. Let your light so shine before men that they may see what? Your good works. Because people are watching you. And, 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 and what's the direct result? Not that you become so great, but that God gets the glory that they may glorify your Father which is in heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, make darkness disappear. I pray that there is something that I've said today that may have inspired you to give your life to Christ. I pray as Paul and Silas did in the prison. The Philippian jailer said, what must I do to be saved? He thought he had them bound. But guess what? He found out he was bound. And he cried out, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And thine house. This message today was geared to encourage you and to empower you. Pastor, but you were preaching so hard, I just felt guilty. God never intends for you to feel guilty. That's a, that's a trick of the enemy. That's a deceptive spirit that the enemy want to keep you in bondage. No, what you felt from what I'm preaching, it should be a conviction that God is saying, son, I love you. Come on home. As I said when my mama was beating me, with all them straps she found, she wasn't beating me to kill me. She was beating me so I would straighten up. Come on, somebody. That it would yield the fruits of righteousness. And so today, this was a message to holler at you. To encourage you that God loves you. No, you might not be the perfect specimen, and you might have a whole lot of baggage. But in spite of all that, God had you tuned in that you might have the opportunity to start afresh. I'm so glad that God don't remember our mess. He said, as far as the east is from the west, I'll remember, this, remember your sins no more. And so today, if that's you, say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart and save me right now. Father, forgive me. I hear you hollering at me today. God, there's nobody at fault. It's just me. And Father, I want to receive you as my personal, personal Savior. If you meant that, you're saved right where you are. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as this individual has heard this word and has surrendered their lives, God, I thank you for allowing me to be just a small segment of participation in your mighty move. I pray, God, as they have now yielded themselves to you, that they will find a church, that they will find some loved ones, and go and walk out their soul salvation in fear and reverence. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will reignite their joy, their peace, and even their love. Father, in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for hearing your servant's prayer. Come on, give God a good praise. Come on, give God a good hallelujah. As the praise team comes to close us out in song, we, amen, here at God of Deliverance want to say thank you for all of you that continue to support us. I've seen there's a young lady named Teresa who sowed seed to the ministry. Thank you so much. Not even a member of the church, but sowing seed to show forth her love for our great efforts of trying to spread the gospel to those, amen, who are not able to come to the place. Thank you. And there's so many others that I petition. Thank all the members. Thank all of those who pray for us and stand with us. This is a time where we need to band together even the more 
as we see the day approaching. I pray that God has spoke to your heart. I pray that you'll share this message. Somebody else needs this message besides you. Don't be afraid to share this gospel on your page. Sometimes I wonder about some people that they say they love the ministry, but you never see the, the gospel on their page. Share the gospel. You never know who may get saved by looking at this message on your page. Father, I thank you. Go ahead, choir, and start singing. And I'm just going to try to ease right on out the way. May God bless you. We love you. God bless. forgot something so sorry I forgot today is communion and so let us get our communion cups amen as Robin continues to play and I wanted that song to be the last song because I love that song but come on let's get our communion amen and break bread with those that are out there who could not make it into the fellowship on this morning amen we got our minister Mike Dunn here amen so I want him to get the scriptures prepared and come down here, amen, where I am, and read the portion of scripture. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Get the communion is back there on the behind you, church. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let Brother Derek know we got that for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Robin. Go ahead and sing. Put the camera on her. Amen. chapter starting at verse 23 for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you and the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take 
eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Verse 27 says, Who, wherefore, whosoever shall be guilty or break this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Verse 28 says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. If he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. I read 1 Corinthians 11, chapter verses 23 through 34. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Father, in Jesus' name, as we have just read, oh God, he has put forth the effort to ask us to drink this cup, eat this bread of the Lord unworthy. We ask God that you would bless this bread, God. We ask God that you would anoint it, oh God, for our benefit. Oh God, take it to take away all sickness and disease. For Lord, we believe, oh God, what your word says. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for thine iniquity, the chastisement of his peace was upon him. And with the stripes, we're here. We believe it, therefore we speak it, that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against the judgment shall be condemned. For Lord, we declare it and we speak it in our hearts and we speak it openly that we are healed by your mighty power. You, and we give you all the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, and Father God, we just thank you and bless you for the cup, God, yes, that we're God. getting ready to partake of. Thank Father God, I'm asking that you bless each and every Absolutely. individual. Father God, we thank you for healing in our vessels, oh God. We thank you for your word is true, oh God. We love you and we bless you. Thank in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 As we're standing before you to eat of that, that bread and drink of that cup, we do it in remembrance of our Lord, Savior, and Jesus Christ. You, we pray, Father, that you will anoint it for your glory. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, Jesus. let us eat and drink. All of it. All of it. And let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Just let us all stand. Thank you, Lord God. As the choir is going to sing the final selection. Amen. Thank you. Amen.